Hey guys, I'm Kylie and welcome back to my vlog. So today in my vlog, I'm going to be talking about Night by Ellie Wiesel. And it's a really deep book about the Holocaust and I feel like we need to talk about it. So before we get started, you might be wondering, why am I sitting in my closet? Well, good question. I am sitting in my purple closet because I'm using the setting to really explain how like the concentration camps are very small. So my closet is very small. I have very little room to roam in. And Ellie, he, when they lived in the concentration camps, they had very little room to roam in. Even though they went to different places all the time, some of them were bigger, some of them were smaller, some of them were really rough. And it shows how he was trapped. With such little room, you can't go anywhere. You don't have any room to go. You don't have anywhere to go because you're trapped. I have walls surrounding me and I can't leave. And I feel like being in this closed area can also can represent being in, like, in a very small concentration camp. But now let's talk about the main character, Ellie Wiesel. So in the very beginning, he was a very like conservative kid. He really wanted to learn about God. He told his parents about it. So they got like this mentor to help him, Moish the Beetle, which really like gave him a new perspective he taught him God. He he motivated Ellie to learn about God. Moish the Beetle gave Ellie like a new a new perspective on life and like what the future can hold for you. But throughout the story, he starts being like depressed, like he's starting to change. He's starting to develop in this new character. And throughout the book, um, he started to like lose more hope in God. Going through this pain and suffering and not having anyone to help you that you looked up to. It really, like, can make you, like, not want to, like, do anything with that person. This whole journey just, like, dehumanized his thoughts. He It made him, like, empty. It made him empty inside. And in the very end, chapter 8, page 112, in the quote where his father dies, it says, No prayers were said over his tome, tome, no candle lit in his memory. His last word has been my name. He had called out to me and I had not answered. I did not weep, and it pained me that I could not weep. But I was out of tears, and deep inside me, if I could have searched the recesses of my feeble conscience, I might have found something like free at last. So I picked this quote because I feel like this shows how he couldn't even cry for his father. If you can do something to that and make someone not cry for like their loved ones, it really shows how much how like awful that event was. And so I feel like a really big theme in this is dehumanization. Page 42, chapter 3, it says, Needle in hand, tattooed numbers on our left arms. I became A7713. From then on, I had no other name. The people literally didn't even give them a name anymore. They were born with that name, and now they gave them a number on their left arm. Like, they don't even want to know their names. And this shows how, like, that can impact people to where they won't even cry, you know? Going through all these awful events, he won't even cry. Like, like, he was just a kid. He had to, like, get used to everything that was happening. He got used to everything that was happening. To be able to survive, you had to be the fittest. So, chapter 5, page 72, they literally had to run to make sure that they would pass the test. If you would survive that test, that means you would live. If you, if you didn't, that means you would die. But they don't really know what actually happened to the people who didn't pass the test, but I'm pretty sure they went to the crematorium. But, like, read this. It was my turn. I ran without looking back. My head was spinning. You were too skinny. You were too weak. You were too skinny. You were, you were good for the ovens. The race seemed endless. I felt as though I had been running for years. You were too skinny. You were too weak. At last, I've, I have arrived, exhausted. When I had caught my breath, I asked Yossi and Tibi, did they write me down? They did not write him down because he he wanted to fight for his life. And I feel like he had a purpose. Like, he had a purpose to fight. Like, that's why he still, like, that's why he lived through all this pain, through all this suffering. If I was in that point, like, if I was, like, doing that, I would, I would, like, cry. Like, I would suffer. I would not be able to hold back and not, like, feel pain. Like, I'm just feeling pain, like, not even, like, I'm, I haven't even been through that. I haven't been anything through like that, but I'm just feeling pain. It's so sad that they had to go through this. Page 34, chapter 3. It's a really long quote, but I feel like everyone should really hear this. 
Now I've, never shall I forget that night, the first night in camp that turned my life into one long night seven times sealed. Never shall I forget that smoke. Never shall I forget the small faces of the children whose bodies I saw transform into smoke under a silent sky. Never shall I forget those flames that consumed my faith forever. Never shall I forget the nocturnal silence that deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget those moments that murdered my God and my soul and turned my dreams to ashes. Never shall I forget those things, even where I condemned condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. And hearing this quote, this can show that this this still haunts him till to, to this day. It would still haunt me to this day. Like, watching a scary movie, that haunts me till this day. So going through this, I could never imagine it. It would be too hard and just, it's it still haunts him. Like, it it showed, like, it, it gave, like, I'm sorry, I'm, like, speechless right now, but it made him, like, not even want to believe in anything anymore. But this is just my opinion on the book, and overall, I really liked the book, but reading it was really tough, and I actually, it did give my, like, heart and some feels. I can't understand what he went through because I didn't go through it, but I definitely, I definitely would request reading it. It's such a good book. My mom's even reading it. I think, I, I can't believe he said this, but he said, like, he has no hate. Because, like, hate makes people, like, do these kind of things. And hearing him say that, it really gives me a perspective of, like, okay, I don't want to hate now. I don't want this to happen to anyone else. And I feel like this book really gave me, like, a new, a new, like, book on life. And I, I really recommend this book, so. Thank you for coming to my vlog. I'll talk to you later, maybe back with another book. But I read this book, guys. It's definitely really good. Bye!